What is up, players and players? Neely's here from the Cool Pokey Players, and this match is just getting started right away. This is round one of what we had going on in the league. Um, what's today's date? This is actually the day after, so on Monday, August 22nd, uh, round one, we have Jason over here playing the Greninja Talonflame, and that card you see blank faced up is Talonflame. Um, he runs four copies of it. That's why the Talonflame is on the side over there, and that's the only... um. Blink card he has, so that's the only one you have to worry about. So that's Talon Flame. And on the right, we have Taylor playing Mega Steelix. I thought he was going to play Mega Audino. That'd be cool to be see the second and first place uh, World's, uh, Masters Worlds TCG Championship matchup right here. But we're actually going to see a Mega Steelix in action, which is pretty cool because I've not had a major Mega Steelix match yet. So let's see if we can get this in action. Um, we did see an Ultra Ball from Jason to get a Froakie out. He does have that energy on the Talon Flame. But since it's the first time he can't attack, and that's actually kind of cool. He actually was able to start with it. That's pretty cool. But um, I think I was looking at the, I didn't look, I glanced at the second place deck that won um, the the world's deck. He came in second place with the Greninja Talonflame. And I think it only runs four Frokies and four Talonflames. So it's pretty likely to get that Talonflame out on the first turn. Okay, and Taylor, we see an energy drop on Steelix play Ninja Boy. And this is the first time we've seen Ninja Boy on one of these um, as well. And he switches out the Steelix for a carving. Uh, he probably doesn't have that Mega Steelix or that Steelix Spearing Link ready to go. So, let's let's he's like, let's back it out. Let's put in someone. Let's hope we can get a carving break, get a Diamond Gift going, get some energies in and just card pop. And power up the Steelix that way. So, we see that. And it will be a pass from, oh, a cut. Sorry. Sorry. Now a pass. Okay. And now we're seeing Jason here. And let's see. Ooh, we see the Frodeger. And that's not good on Taylor's side because that's how the Greninja player, that's how the Greninja deck wants to roll. You want to see that fur to Frodeger. Get that energy attack. But say he attaches a float stone. I think Talaflame has free retreat. Don't quote me on it. I'm assuming because how fast it is and how fast in the video game it has free retreat. So don't quote me. I haven't. I haven't paid attention to the retreat calls on Talonflame, but I'm assuming it has free retreat. See a Professor Birch here, and he does get heads, which means he's going to be dropping seven new cards and not happen to discard any. So let's see what these seven cards bring for Jason over here and see if this could be a game changer at this point. Um, See a tap from Taylor, and let's see what the cards bring. Okay, I saw a Greninja break. Uh, Look like some Frokies there. Uh, a Birch, a Die Ball, a Max Potion. And we got one more, buddy. There you go. Ooh, a muscle band. That is... Wow. I don't know what to say there. That's... If Taylor would see that hand, he'd be like, man, I don't know what to do. But um, this is really good. We're going to see the die ball here. Um, We're going to assume for a... Unless he plays Remoraid, a uh, Froakie. Oh, he plays Remoraid. Okay, so we're going to see an Octillery getting set up soon. I mean, I'm pretty sure we weren't going to die ball a Frodeger in this situation. I mean, that would just be, that. what would be the sense of that? When I mean, you need to get those Frodegers on the bench. You don't want that on your hand. And I know some people are probably saying that Jason probably took a risk of playing Professor Birch because he could have ended up with a Frodeger in his hand. But in this case, he didn't. This is actually really good for Jason in this situation. And he's going to use the Arrow Blitz, which does 40 damage and have you search two cards from your deck and put them into your hand so we see a water energy and so artillery oh he's thinking about artillery let's see he's probably looking to see what could be prized uh probably artillery maybe not a water energy won't see a green no need for a greninja or maybe a die ball okay he gets the water energy and the artillery so next turn, we're going to see that Water Energy probably going at Frodeger. Get the Artillery down. He's going to be able to get more cards. Man, this guy is just setting up. And once these Greninja Breaks come out, they are very tough to deal with. Not impossible, but very tough to deal with. And, uh... I don't know what happened there. Um, I'm assuming the attack did, did go off. Maybe he used Power Gym, but I think Talaflame, there's no way Talaflame has a, there's no way Talaflame has a fighting, oh, it could have, yeah, has a fighting resistance, maybe went to 30, I, I thought Power Gym did 40, sorry about that, sorry about that move, but let's pay attention to what's going on with Jason here, Um, we do have the 
the throw dagger ready to go with the float stone. So we are going to see a water duplicates this turn. And he does have the artillery down. So he's able to get more cards even though he, I think he has more than five in his hand. And here comes the water duplicates. Let's see he has all three. He has one throw dagger. Two throw daggers. Does he have three throw daggers? He has three throw daggers. Ha ha ha. And this is... Boy. The thing with, the thing with Steelix is it does take a while to power up. So, we're going to see an energy on Kirby. I'm assuming he's going to play a ninja boy here. There was there we go. The be a seeker for the ninja boy. I was like there was no need to put three energies on a carving for if you weren't playing ninja boy. So, we're going to see the switch out probably into the Steelix EX. There we go. And hopefully he does have that Steelix spirit link and that Mega Steelix. I want to see this Mega Steelix in action or at least see the Iron Tail from the Steelix. That will be pretty cool too. For those who don't know what the Iron Tail does, it does 100 it's 100 times. So you flip a coin until you get tails, and for each head you get, you're doing 100 damage. So if you get three heads, you're doing 300 damage. One head, 100 damage, so forth. But if you get tails in the first one, then you're doing absolutely nothing. One of those gamble plays, but boy, if you can get on a lucky roll, like if you can get one of those Vegas rolls, be like seven, 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 and just start, just start hitting heads, 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 heads. Boy, the damage is gonna be unstoppable. And then we're gonna see the Mega Steelix here without the Spirit Link, so that's gonna pass this turn with the Ninja Boy Evil Soul combo. That's a pretty interesting combo right there. And this can turn things, this can get Taylor into this game here. We're going to see an Ultra Ball from Jason. He's going to get rid of Talon Flame and Delinquent. Plays a Delinquent. That is nice to know. For the Greninja, on the bench Greninja. That is something to take note of. He does have a Die Ball in his hand, so he could get a. He might not play that. I think he does have a. Does he have a Greninja? He's going to muscle bend the bench. So he's going to take a, get that Frodegger out of there. He does bench. Okay, so he does ball both Greninjas off the bench. So he's prop. I think his strategy behind that is just in case these Frodegger, just in case these Greninjas on the bench go down, he can Sacred Ash them, get them back into the deck, and then have the, Fren the Frodegger that's on the bench come in, use the water duplicates, and get them back out again, and not having to go through the Froki line and wait an extra turn to evolve these. That might be his plan of not why he... That's probably why the Float Stone and that Water Energy is on that Frodegger. Don't quote me. I don't know what's going through Jason's head right now. It's just what I'm assuming at this point. So... I think it's still Jason's turn. I I believe it's still Jason's turn. We're gonna see if we're gonna see a retreat here. Most likely we will. Unless he's just gonna pass and hoping that he cannot okay. We do see a retreat into the town flame, and that's gonna be two extra cards he's gonna be searching. And probably one of the only times you probably wish this town flame was a fire type so you can do some weakness. It's not. So we're just gonna see a 40. So that Mega Steelix has 80 damage on it. I didn't see the first card he got. Probably was water energy, I'm gonna assume. And look like a die ball. I think it was a water energy and a die ball. Let's see here. Oh, and the reason why he is drawn because we saw him drop the. He picked up an. Taylor picked up an Ultra Ball and passed. So that's why we're going back into Jason here. So there goes the Greninja break he had in his hand earlier and the die ball for a another Greninja break, I'm assuming. There's no need for a Greninja at this point. Just get the two breaks out there. And there we go. So, Talifame's going bye-bye. He, he's not bye-bye meaning that he's not staying in an active. He's retreating to the bench. It's time for Jason to be applying some pressure right now. He has some water energies. He, he has two water energies. He can start doing some giant water shurikens and start really raining havoc over here. So, he's going to attach that water energy to the bench Greninja break. Getting that ready to go. And we're probably going to see... Uh, and he does have the opportunity to use Abyssal Hand to draw some more cards. I think he's sitting at four. Could be five. But there goes the retreat of Talon Flame. There goes the Greninja break with the Muscle Band. So we're at least going to be seeing 100 if he returns that water energy for the Moonlight Slash because of the Muscle Band. Giant Water Shuriken on the Steelix. So that's going to be six extra damage there. And that should be a knockout on that Steelix. On that Mega Steelix. 120, 100, yeah. Let's well, Steelix have 230 HP. Oh, 140. I'm sorry. 140. Wow. Horrible map here. Yeah, that's a knockout. So he's going to play the Abyssal Hand from the Octillery. That's all I'm pointing to. It says he's going to have him draw two cards here. Octillery and I didn't see. It looked like Sycamore. 
Could be Birch. Oh, die ball. Okay, he's gonna get the die ball, and this could be for Greninja here. Probably get that Frodeger on the bench's lineup to have a Greninja ready to go. That's a surprise. Yes. Okay, so he's gonna play that. Get that Greninja. Evolve that Greninja. So he has all these Greninjas out. This is what you don't want to see if you're going against a Greninja deck. This is too set up right here. This is going to be tough to take out. And here comes the Professor Birch. I forgot he didn't play a supporter yet. Tails really doesn't even matter at this point because he has Octillery's ability to get him more cards. So the Tails on Birch means little to nothing in this situation. But let's see if he's going to get some water energies out of here. Um, we saw Lysander, Die Ball, uh, Sycamore, and a Talon Flank. Wow. He has options. And that's going to be, should be the knockout on the Mega Steelix right there. And there goes the first knockout. And that could probably have turned the game around for Jason. I think this probably sealed the game for him right here. Because that that Steelix is what Taylor needed to get going. And now there's no energies on there. So we're going to see an Ultra Ball from Taylor. And our, what are we going to see here? What are we going to see? Where are we going to see? Shaman probably? Get some cards? Because I'm, yep, Shaman. So he's going to get a first six cards. Because I don't think he had none in his hand. Because he passed on the ultra ball because he only had two cards in his hand so we're gonna see a fresh six cards for taylor and hopefully hopefully it's something for him to get this game turned around let's see here um, this is unfortunate for taylor i don't know if he plays dce i know he plays strong energies in here and we didn't see not one strong energy in his hand if we did d if there was a dc we didn't see that either and it looked like he got in two metal energies and one fighting energy in there uh, don't know how much that's gonna help him. We do see the Steel CX. That's cool. And he's thinking, cause everything on this board is a two prize hit, and with two Greninja Giant Water Shurikens, Shaman is automatically an easy two prize hit there. Um, he can. I think the Magarna has 160 HP, so a Giant Water Shuriken and that Muscle Band Moonlight Slash from the Greninja in the active is already a knockout from there. So. T uh, Jason can win this game in two turns, including this turn, this turn, and next. This game could be over by Jason's next turn. So we're gonna see a dive ball here. Uh, I really, unless he runs three Greninja breaks, I really don't see. He's gonna play the Remorate. Okay, he can't bench that, so that's gonna go to his hand. Um, he does have a Water Energy in his hand because he did take that from the Moonlight Slash. And he's going to use the Giant Water Shuriken on the Steelix, on the Full Arch Steelix in the background. And we're going to see Sycamore. He's going aggressive here. He wants those water energies bad. Like, give me the money right here. Let's try to end this game now. Jason is not playing around. He does not want to see that Steelix powered up. And let's see. I think he did get a water energy on the first card he drew. Okay, I think I see it. He's going to retreat to probably the other Greninja break. There we go. And probably use that giant water shuriken probably. Because that one has an energy on it. Or he might just save it to probably just double out the shaman here. And we're going to see a muscle band. Wow. That's not good. And I think he's going. Yeah, I think he's just going to knock out the Magirna right here. The giant water shuriken hits the 60. That's going to be 100 damage. That should be enough. Magirna, I think, has 160 HP. That's a knockout right there. And that's two more prize cards coming for Jason. Let's see what these prize cards give him. Um, we have, ooh, he has two water energies. That's a double KO on Shaman. So next turn, Taylor, if Taylor doesn't shuffle Jason's hand, this is game right here. This, Taylor will have to, I don't think there's nothing Taylor can do. And I think Taylor knows that's game. He's, he has a sycamore. He's just going to sycamore it, see what he can get. But this is game. Jason has two water energies, double giant water shuriken, knock out the shaman. That's game. Or he can use it on the Steelix. It don't matter. Everything's a two prize hit. Let's see what he gets here. He has nothing that's going to help him. That's game. And I think Taylor knows it too. Yeah, he knows it. So, yeah, there's nothing in his hand that's going to... We finally see the strong energy, I'm, and Taylor's probably like, man, where were you like uh, the first get, the first turn or two? It just, there's nothing he could do. Um, J 
Jason draws his card. There goes the giant water. There goes the giant water shuriken. Takes out the shaman. That is game right there. That is very unfortunate. And I really want to see this go down. And it just couldn't. It just didn't work out. So, um, checking it was a versus seeker look like a sycamore for his price, but we're gonna go to the play of the game here. And that play of the game is when that Greninja break took out that Mega Steel GX, Taylor's only hope of coming back to doing massive damage, and it just didn't work out for him. I wanted to see the Steelix EX work, and I think we are gonna get a chance to see Steelix and Mega Steelix EX work. I know not on these, I know not in any of the videos I have um coming here for the for the rest of this uh day but someone is going to abuse this strategy to see Mega Steelix but as for Jason did a well job with the Greninja had everything work out for him and now if I was playing that Greninja deck none none of that would have worked out none of that would have worked out as all I always end up getting dead draws with the Greninja deck so but kudos for Jason for pulling it out and Taylor good job for sticking it in there he he there was nothing much he can do he just didn't the stuff just didn't come out for him as it did for Jason, but still, it was still a great matchup against two great players, and that's what we like to see. So, I am Nilly from the Cool Poke Players. Stay tuned. It looked like I did get the stuff fixed last week. Um, I only uploaded round one because I was the only one that recorded well. The other three didn't record all the way, which sucked because they were all three great matches. So, we're going to tune in to round two. Um, that should be coming up probably later out today or tomorrow so tune in to look out for that we'll have two brand new players go at it at the feature table i am nilly you guys all have a great day or night and thank you for watching